Hey everyone, welcome to an evening of live painting, sound and spoken word, a co-production of the House of Robot and Artworks Trenton. This event was born just two weeks ago when Zoe suggested we do another live painting event like we did last year. Then the idea just kept growing and getting bigger and here we are tonight with a full um, bill of painting, um, spoken word and music for you tonight. Now there's only three of us in the studio, I have no staff, no crew, so excuse any technical problems. There's sure to be some. Now if you have questions during the night, leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them. It looks like my audio was hot, so I'm bringing that down a little bit. Okay, this event is a fundraiser for both Sprout U School of the Arts and Artwork Trentons. And I know that times are tough right now, but if possible, please do help out these two great organizations and support the arts and support the arts in Trenton. Oh, and we're offering premiums. We got premiums. So for $35, you get Analog Trenton, you get the standard edition, plus the double CD with all filled with artwork. For $50, you get the colored vinyl edition plus the CD. Now it's a gatefold and it has Polaroids of all the artists, all the musicians, and colored vinyl. Now we also got the visual artists of Trenton involved. Ooh, translucent green. That's cool. Every, every one is a different color. Um, so here we have the work of also 40 bands in Trenton, uh, 40 acts, 40 tracks, and we also have the work of 28 artists all over the cover, on the labels, and in the double CD there is also a booklet of art from Trenton area artists. Hey, there's one by Zoe. Cool. Um, so, to, in order to redeem your perk, you need to email me your um, donation receipt and uh, mailing address to bill at houseofrobot.com, and that's all in the comments or the description um, with links to the various sites for donation. And how are we doing on time? Can't find the clock. There it is. Yeah, we got plenty of time. So tonight on the live painting. Oh, and more, for more information on Analog Trenton, visit analogtrenton.com. There are videos, there are pictures, links to Spotify and all the other streaming, streaming sites. All right, so for your visual enjoyment tonight, we have two artists on the left side. We have Zoe, and your mic should be on. Say, say hi. Hello. So what are you painting for us tonight, Zoe? I am painting for you the most fantastic thing you would ever see in your entire life. <laughs> a what? I have no idea what it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and on the right, Leon Rainbow. How are you doing, Leon? All right. How's everybody? <laughs> Wow, that, that, that shaker can't be loud in the mic. Is it loud? <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. We'll, we'll mute that when we're not talking to you. Cool, cool. So what are you working on tonight? I'm just doing a little eyeball character with the words hope because, you know, it's like, it's like doors of hope. So I'm like, ah, you know, I seen Link had done Unity. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, ah, nobody did hope, so I'm going to rock that out today. So kind of just, just getting the sketch in, trying to work it out. And then, you know, I'll work in some of the patterns and designs, and hopefully it'll work out. <laughs> cool. Uh, this project is part of a project I call Doors to Hope. And we started that um, during our Summer Solstice Benefit concert. And we had Lank and Liz kindly paint two doors for us. And I can put those quickly on the screen, a little picture there of what those look like. And those are currently out in the field. The idea is that um, these doors are public art, they go out in the field, they get moved around every now and then. They get blown over by the wind a lot. I'm still trying to figure out how to keep them up all the time. No matter what I do, they get blown over. I have giant cinder blocks on a stand and the wind will like catapult the cinder blocks into the air. It's most remarkable. And let me see up there, lower third. All right, we have our first act tonight coming up in about six minutes. And that will be the students of Sprout U. When we decided to do spoken word, I reached out to Danielle, and she kindly arranged for some students to read for us. Now, Sprout U is one of the organizations we are fundraising for tonight. Um, they are an amazing organization that um, engages kids from infancy to grade 12 in joyful, meaningful, and creative learning 
through an adventurous experiential curriculum. And Danielle and the entire school do amazing work. And I'm very glad we can be associated with them. And also coming up tonight, we have music from Dan Castle. We have spoken word from John S. Hall. Music from me, if you want to call it music, it's called experimental noise. We have <laughs> spoken word from Eileen Sullivan and more music from Hole in the Earth to round out our night. And I'm going to let you watch and listen to the painting for a few minutes while we start getting our people on Zoom. Danielle, can you hear me? Let's see. 
I cannot hear you yet. Danielle, are you able to hear me? And bear with us, everyone. We're trying to work through some technical problems. All right, we just heard from Danielle. She'll be along in a moment. I'm here. Okay, excellent. <laughs> I'm sorry, I pulled the plug. That's okay, that happens. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, I hear you very well. Good. So, let's get started. Everyone, welcome. Danielle from Sprout U School of the Arts. We are very pleased to, to I've, actually, it's the first time I've actually talked to you not over text. I know. And, and that's, that's very exciting. That's um, it. So you have some students to read, some Sprouts to read for us tonight. I do. And that is great. But first, why don't you tell us a little bit about Sprout U School of the Arts and what you do there. Okay, Sprout U School of the Arts was founded in 2016. Um, it is a private uh, K-12, well, I should say, uh, preschool through 12th grade um, academic and performing arts school. Um, we offer uh, academics via Pearson Online Academy and um, which actually gives us, um, I guess, the room to uh, offer the arts and other things of interest, as in um, all of our high schoolers uh, actually are in vocational school in the morning. Um, and then in the afternoon, in the afternoons, our arts um, actually kick in. Um, we have ballet through uh, Ballet Central New Jersey, through their nonprofit New Jersey Fab. Our visual and, and fine arts come through artworks. Um, when things go back to normal. Um, we actually have circus arts through uh, Trent Circus Squad. Um, we actually offer um, in our after school programming, which is another partner that um, we partnered with, which is Trenton Children's uh, Chorus. And they offer piano, drumming, vocal performance, theater performance, um, piano. Um, <laughs> so a lot of partnerships um, which enable our students to get the most. Excellent, that's wonderful. Uh, now you have some readers I, I hear, see for us, some poets. You want I to do. introduce your, our first Sprout for the night? Yes, um, Jemai Brown. He is a 10th grader. 
Um, he's been with me since he was the eight, since the age of two. Um, I'm very proud of him. <laughs> Am I? Hey, Jamai. <laughs> All right, I'm here now. Thank you. <laughs> Had to switch to a quieter place. Thank you. So I'll be reading a poem that I made a couple months ago when I had to attend a, a, a program. We had to do open mic. Uh, the poem is called Manifest Your Future. As I think about life, I realize I'm gifted. I start to think about my future and I become uplifted. When I lead, win, and succeed, it's never scripted. I keep myself in a safe environment where nothing is restricted. I paint pictures for fun, not physically, of course. My love for success is amazing. I shall never show remorse. I keep my circle small, but somehow it feels as if millions of people have show support. And they all smile with bright white teeth like a fresh new Air Force. I take a look in the mirror, showing no regret or negative energy, and it reminds me of my loved ones and all of our loving memories. In the mirror, I see hats and glasses. Of course, those are accessories. But when I take them off and look again, I see another aspect of me. I keep my head up high and remain, and remain grateful for my life, wishing that I had goggles that look into the future. But I remain confident because I know my future is bright. But just thinking about it drives me crazy, just like an Uber. Excuse my humor, but it gets me through anything. And I can't thank God enough. I will never stop worshiping. I stand proud of my skin color, no matter what it may bring. I fix my crown through thick and thin because I am a true king. Thank you. Thank you, Jemai. <laughs> Thank you. That was wonderful. Okay, who do we have next? Um, you have Nayla Hill. Hey, Nayla. Hi. Um, so the poem I'll be doing today is by E.H., also known as Erin Hansen. The puzzle, the, uh, the name of the poem is called Puzzle Pieces. <clears throat> Our lives are just one big puzzle. We don't know how many pieces we've got. There are people that fit in quite nicely and people who do not. We're constantly adding pieces, all of the memories of things we've been through. We add laughter and tears and adventures in the lessons we've learned to be true. Everyone has their own puzzles. There will be ones where you do not fit. Don't you ever dare make your piece smaller just so you can live there for a bit. If you keep cutting your edges, one day you won't recognize what you see and you'll forget the person you once were before the world told you who you should be. Make the most of every piece in your puzzle. It'll be a grand masterpiece when it's done. So you won't have to look back when it's over and realize that you left out the sun. Thank you. I loved a lot about letting the world tell you who you want to be, because I know that exactly. the world has tried to tell me to be a lot of things. <laughs> and I'm yes. so very glad I have not listened. Exactly, because you wouldn't be where you are now. This is very true. And I'm thrilled to be here where I am now with these wonderful artists and with you, Danielle. I'm um, thrilled to be in my environment, too, where kids can learn to, kids learn to be happy with themselves first before trying to make someone else happy. That's incredibly incredibly true you can't you can't help the world if you can't be healthy yourself exactly and so if you're healthy and happy you know when you present yourself to the world you know that's who you are and maybe it'll you know i guess rub off on them or you know it'll it, it'll be so strong that you know maybe they won't try to convince you to be anyone else it took me 50 years to learn that i'm so glad you're teaching that them that net now <laughs> Exactly. Right. Do we have another sprout? Uh, no more sprouts due to the uh, weather. Um, a lot, a lot of my sprouts were. Um, <laughs> I couldn't get in touch with them. Um, otherwise, we would have had four, but I couldn't get in touch with them. So it's only the two of them. Okay. Well, that's just fine. Uh, thank you so much for coming tonight. Again, everyone, we are uh, raising money for both Sprout U School of the Arts and Artworks Trenton. Thirty-five dollars. You get the regular analog Trenton. And 50, the um, uh, limited edition colored, vi colored vinyl. Um, the URL is sproutuschoolthearts.org and artworkstrenton.org. Danielle, thank you so much. 
Thank you, and Bill. Thank you for the previous uh, fundraisers. Thank you so much. I, I hope there will be many more to come. Oh, thank you so much. And have and a you great know where night. to reach me. Yes, I do. Me. Yes, I do. And we'll see you next time. You will. Bye-bye. Thank you. And we are back with our painters. Let's bring your mics up. So Leon was telling us about water-based spray paint, which I had never heard of. <laughs> yeah, it's a relatively new um, technology. These paints are from the MTM brand, which is out of Spain. But um, it's a little bit, uh, the odor is super low. It's great for working indoors. It's a... Uh, a little bit more runnier than a regular spray paint. You're off camera. Come back on camera. Oh, okay. I'm over here. Yep. Okay. That's your camera. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's a little bit uh, runnier than like a regular spray paint, but uh, once you get used to it, it's great to use indoors. It mixes really well with acrylics, and you know, gives you uh, a lot of flexibility to work indoors. Because, uh, you know, it's hard to work indoors with spray paint because of the fumes. But I also use this to work with uh, kids. It's a little bit, uh, it's ex a little bit expensive, but, you know, it's great to be able to, you know, work with kids with a paint that's uh, still aerosol based, but is uh, a lot less toxic. Excellent. So what are you painting with tonight? I'm painting with acrylic. Cool. That face is haunting. <laughs> it is my face. It is my face that haunts you. Next up tonight, let me get the shot set. Hello, Dan, and we are live. 
Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I can. Excellent. Let me bring those mics down. Now our next act, our first musical act tonight is Dan Castle. Now, I love hearing and seeing things I've not experienced before. And when I first heard and saw Dan at Artworks Trenton Art All Night, I was very moved. And I've had the pleasure of working with Art Dan on two events now. And we are going to be doing something. Um, we were going to do something before COVID, a very special event here in the studio. But mm, things happen. So we will be doing that uh, hopefully this spring. I look forward spring. to that very much. As do I. It should be a fun, fun experiment. And I'm looking forward to seeing what arises from that. All right. Indeed. Without further comment, Dan, take it away. All right. I'm also going live on my Instagram on my phone here. So let me just press. There we go. Thank you. 
Thank you. Sorry about that uh, very unpleasant uh, thing that happened there at the beginning. Just some cord trouble, but um, happens to all of us. Working on, yeah, it happens. <clears throat> so thank you so much, Bill, for giving me the opportunity to uh, play some music tonight. You know, it's uh, a nice therapeutic session for me, and hopefully it is likewise to uh, others watching, both on Instagram on my phone and on uh, everyone watching through Zoom and Artworks and YouTube. <clears throat> so I'm just going to keep on jamming over here some more uh, soulful, slow, slow pieces tonight, is that sort of the, the vibe that I'm feeling right now.
play something a little more uplifting now. so much bill i don't know if i have uh, a couple more minutes left or you want to take a few more minutes a few more minutes yeah we we started a little early because we lost some poets but absolutely <clears throat> all right and what's up 
Braden. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dan. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. And again, I'm sorry about that uh, very unpleasant noise there in the first response. Oh, that's no problem at all. Dan, I have a, I have a question. Yes. Um, was the cello your, your first instrument? Uh, it was, yeah. The cello, I started learning cello um, when I was in third or fourth grade when I went to school at the Waldorf School. I had to pick a string instrument, and I, I just decided to pick the cello and ended up sticking with it. One of the things I love that you do is using the looping pedals. Was, was, that, was, was that inspired by something or your own experimentation? Um, it was inspired, I guess, really by my own experimentation. I was, I was inspired by other cellists who uh, do similar have this a similar approach to uh, live looping like Zoe Keating and another cellist named Matthew Shaning. They were my first two major inspirations when I first started doing the live looping back in 2012. And um, but really it, it stemmed from me wanting to incorporate my love of percussion and bass and I just had all of these compositions floating around in my head that I thought would be really cool to find a way to become a one-man band of some sort. Yeah, that's uh, what I've always loved about your performances. It does have the percussion, it does have the bass, yeah, all exactly. from the same instrument. And it's, once you stop thinking that it's looping, which takes a few seconds, it, it just flows completely naturally. Yeah. And I, I, I love it so much. That's the goal, is to make it not feel like it's, you know, looping technology, but just to have it be one fluent sound, you know? So 
I'm still working on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you got it, man. I think you, I think you have, have that nailed. Cheers. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dan. Um, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you so much for performing tonight. And right, have a lovely pleasure. evening. Yes, you too. Thanks, Bill. Take care. All right, in just a handful of minutes, we will have our next performer of the evening, John S. Hall. And we'll be back in just a few minutes with that. Let's do a quick check in with the artists. That's beautiful, Leo. Oh, thank you. Coming along. <laughs> Just gotta wait for things to dry at this point. <laughs> so I'm gonna move your camera shot a little bit. We're not getting her whole face, and that face is, is wonderful. And we are live right now.
our next spoken word performer is, I can't, my glasses are fogging with this mask. <sighs> our next spoken word performer is John S. Hall, who is both a musician and poet. John's band, King Missile, is one of my favorite, made one of my favorite albums from the 90s, and I've been a fan of his poetry for some time. Now, this performance does include adult language, so if you're listening to, with anyone who has sensitive ears, maybe come back in 15 minutes. Now, to paraphrase a line of John's, pain is better than emptiness, emptiness is better than nothing, nothing is better than this, and no one is better than John S. Hall. <laughs> Let me bring John up. And the switcher is not responding. There we go. All right, John. Thank you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, you are live. We can hear each other. Yes. Thank you for right, performing uh, tonight. It is greatly appreciated. It's an honor to have you uh, broadcasting. It's an honor to be asked. Um, I, uh, I hope some people get some enjoyment out of this. And whether they do or not, I really do hope that um, people will consider um, contributing to uh, these uh, to, to these two organizations. Uh, based on what I've seen today, they're phenomenal. So, um, so yeah. Um, and I've heard uh, some of the music in that recording that Bill is uh, hawking, and uh, it's, it's really great. Um, Thank you. Thank you for well, that. Well worth the price of admission. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I'm going to start. Uh, I... Uh, I, uh, I've been, uh, since early October, I've been trying to write at least a poem a day and succeeding and uh, posting uh, those poems on uh, Facebook. Um, I decided for this performance, I will just do in basically chronological order, uh, the poems I like out of the 180 or so that I've written so far this year. Um, uh, and yes, yeah, some of these are vulgar. The first one is vulgar. Um, um, and, uh, it, uh, okay, so I'm starting. This is poem, I'll give you the name, the numbers, and, uh, and I've given many of them titles today. Uh, okay, poem number seven, The Return, part one. So far, no vulgar poems, no violent poems, nothing particularly transgressive. I'm not concerned. Before I know it, I will be literarily, if not literally, sucking and fucking, being sucked and getting fucked, contemplating and describing some violent or vulgar tableau. Eyes may be gouged out, cocks cut off, balls abused, assholes stretched wide to accommodate God knows what. It will come. All will be revealed in time. As Rilke said, patience is everything. This is poem number 26 it's called The Laundry. It was a huge load of laundry and anyone who saw it would look at it and think that laundry isn't going to do itself. After several weeks, the laundry got sick of hearing this and it hopped two enormous bags and then hopped to the laundromat and did itself and then hopped back home. I showed those fuckers, the laundry said to itself. This raises a number of questions. Did the laundry use detergent? Did it use dryer sheets? Where did it get all of the quarters? Did anyone notice that the laundry was doing itself? Did anyone try to help? When the laundry is done, is it still laundry? When does it stop becoming laundry? When it is put away? After the laundry is put away, does it still think of itself as laundry? Does laundry get attached to its identity as, as laundry? Or does some laundry hate being laundry? Is there some laundry that doesn't even identify as laundry? Does some laundry organize protest marches or protest hops with slogans like clothes are clothes or dirty equals clean, we are all the same or laundry is an oppressive bullshit construct? I am sure some laundry remains neutral with regard to some of the issues. Some laundry never goes to protest hops. Some laundry is apolitical. I'm fairly sure that most of these laundry questions will never be answered. Sometimes the answers aren't as important as the questions. I believe this may be one of those times. This is poem number 35. It's called Almost. Things I almost did today. A. Signed up for a course in Sanskrit. B. Signed up for a course in how to record voiceovers. C. Wrote a poem that I like. This is poem number 56. It is called Small Dick. He had a small dick, but he knew how to use it. He lived on the second floor, and back when the tour buses came by, he would stand by the window wearing nothing but a Trump mask and yell to the tourists to get their attention and then point with both hands to his small dick. 
poem number 63, In Bloom, B-L-U-M-E. Hi, are you there? It's me, John. For that to work, do you have to put God after the there? Does it only work if your name is Margaret? Maybe you do. Maybe it does. This is poem number 79. It's called The Visit. I was speaking today with my mom. Actually, I was probably monologuing about the phenomenon of closet heterosexuality. She found the concept puzzling. Why, she wondered, would anyone want to pretend that they were gay? I said, peer pressure. And I told her that in the 70s, when I used to go to the Rocky Horror Picture Show, many of my friends would try to get me to admit that I was attracted to Tim Curry, but I just wasn't. Come on, they would say. How could you not be? I don't like all that makeup, I would say, which was, of course, not really the issue. In Female Trouble by John Waters, Aunt Ida tries to fix up her nephew Gator with a guy. Gator says, I keep trying to tell you I ain't gay, but Ida, who only wants her nephew to be happy, insists that the world of heterosexuals is a sick and boring life. I didn't mention this film to my mom, but I did talk to her about the gay subtext of the TV show My Favorite Martian. I was surprised that she was unaware of it. It was a good visit with my mom. Okay, uh, next is poem number 16, 116, and I wrote chords for it. I'm gonna play it on this here uke. Fuck the fuck out of me, baby. Fuck the fuck out of me. I'm so full of fuck, and that's not what I wanna be. Fuck the fuck out of me. Fuck me till I choke. Choke me till I fuck. Stick my head between your legs and squeeze it while I suck. Fuck me till my ears can't hear. Fuck me till my eyes can't see. Fuck me until I can fuck no more. Fuck the fuck out of me. Fuck me once, fuck me twice. Fuck me vegan chicken soup with rice. Fuck me three times, four times, five. Fuck me until I forget I'm alive. Until the cows come home, fuck me until my skin turns blue, fuck me until the fuck's fucked out of me, and I'll fuck the fuck out of you. Fuck me until the fuck's fucked out of me, and I'll fuck the fuck out of you. I will fuck the fuck out of you. Next one is a uh, poem number 127, and it is called Cockfighting. We were talking today, my mom and I, about the possible origins of cock... This was a different visit with my mom. Uh, about the origins of cockfighting. It seems unlikely that an idle chicken farmer one day thought, hey, I wonder if I could get these two roosters to fight. Then I could invite the neighbors over and take bets on which one will win. More likely, a farmer said something like, it sucks that these two roosters won't stop fighting, but maybe I ought to try to make lemonade out of these lemons and invite the neighbors over and take bets on which one will win. These absurd speculations made me wonder why the cops are fighting in the first place. Often in nature, violent competitions are centered around mating, but it is my understanding that hens far outnumber roosters on most farms. So why are these cops wasting time about fighting about fucking hens when they could be fucking hens? Each rooster could have a goddamn harem of hens. Why fight cocks when you could be fucking hens? It makes no sense to me. I suppose it's possible that there's one hopelessly hot hen that all the roosters want, and it's hard to, but it's hard to wrap my head around such a notion. I've never been attracted to any non-human animal, so I'm probably not the best person to ask about the relative fuckability of hens. They all equally unfuckable to me. I discussed this most of this with my mom uh, with a slight with slightly less coarse language although I don't know why I self-censored my mom seems almost impossible to offend and I have tried my mom also had no thoughts as to why a rooster would rather fight another rooster than fuck say six hens it may remain one of the mysteries of the universe uh, now next uh, several are um, very short sad poems uh, so I've called them the sad poems Poem number 128. Even though I knew you were coming, it was a joy to see you, Snow. It was a joy to see the happy falling flakes and to remember that there are hearts full of happiness, even when my heart is bereft. 
poem number 129. They say it can feel like a punch to the gut, but it is more like something that grows inside, that needs to be expelled, that cannot be expelled, that one has to be patient with until it diminishes in its own time. Poem number 130. I have sat in front of fires and found them both mesmerizing and meditative. I have found that fires can distract the mind in ways that movies and television cannot. I yearn to burn. Poem number 131. There is simultaneously the sense that there is nothing to be said and the sense of not wanting to stop trying to say. Poem number 132. And the eyes closed and the grief interrupted the mantra repeatedly. And the mind got frustrated. Shake it off, said the mind. And the grief said, you shake it off. That shut the mind up for a while. 136. When a situation cannot be changed, magical thinking ensues. It can be part of the process or it can hinder growth. Or perhaps the hindering of growth is part of the process. Sometimes one needs to wait before attempting forward motion. Sometimes one needs to hibernate, to chill. Or maybe one needs to stand naked in the snow. Okay, these next two are room poems. First one's called In the Bedroom. Poem number 143, In the Bedroom. It was bedlam in the bedroom. It looked like someone had a fitful, frantic night. But now the bed is made. The stuff on the floor is picked up. The pillows are back in place. It is as if last night never happened. Poem number 155, In the Kitchen. There is a lot going on in the kitchen. The pull-up bar yearns for hands that grip. The frying pan wants to be heated up. The dishes are happy to be clean. The sink is enjoying the feeling of emptiness. The garbage was glad to have been taken out. The refrigerator is burdened with the felt sense of items that must be discarded. The cupboards are less concerned, but even more overburdened. The track lights need to be properly reinstalled. There is a lot going on in the kitchen and a lot that needs to be done. I am glad I'm in the living room. Poem number 171, The Twilight Zone. I feel so free. Oh, this is another vulgar one. I think the rest are all vulgar in some. I feel so free. I can swim up into the asshole of depravity, press my mouth to the vagina of enlightenment and drink its sweet, sweet nectar. Hell, despite my almost disappointingly rigid heterosexuality, I could choke on the cock of brutality or let it rip my ass apart. I can drink from the holy grail of piss and God knows what all else. I can cut my cock off and offer it to the most unusual of squirrels who will bury it where I, where I will never find it. Verily, I can journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination with the freedom of knowing the mind may go wherever the fuck it may want to go. I wonder what the next stop will be. It's poem number 176. I will be fine. How would I like to die? I can think of several ways and probably more ways in which I wouldn't want to die. I wouldn't want to die in debt. I'd like to be able to leave at least two fifths of what I currently have to my kid. I wouldn't want to die in pain or slowly. Carlin said he would like to be blown up, but I think he was referring to his corpse. And as far as I know, he did not get that wish. Pryor said he'd like to die fucking. That sounds like an excellent way, except for the other person involved, unless they were lucky enough to go at the same time. I wrote a poem once about a couple who died at the exact same moment holding hands. And that still sounds kind of perfect to me, but I don't know if I will be part of a couple when I die. I guess as long as I'm not found dead with the words whore and cum slut written on my body with bright red lipstick and a zucchini squash squashed up my ass, I will be fine. And I have two more, and I'm doing them in reverse order. They were both written a couple of days ago, uh, but this one was written after the next one. Otherwise, this has all been in chronological order. Uh, this is called The Next Best Thing. As a vegan who is basically only a vegan because of the animal cruelty involved in producing animal products, I have no objection to lab-grown meat. In fact, I will probably try it the first chance I get, as long as it's not crazy fucking expensive. Lab-grown chicken, lab-grown beef, lab-grown bacon and pork, bring that shit on. But while you're at it, why not lab-grown human flesh? All of the of cannibalism without any of the questionable ethics. 
No longer will the ultra rich have to tie people to dining room tables and cut them open and consume them while they are still alive. Although of course they still will be able to. Human barbecues could become a thing of the past. No longer will the experience of eating human hearts and brains and thighs and breasts and rumps and feet and hands be limited to the 1%. Of course, it won't really be cannibalism, just the next best thing. You can't have everything, unless, of course, you're very, very rich. And uh, I will end with this. Thank you so much, Bill, for asking me. This has been fun for me, at least, uh, hopefully um, for some of you. Uh, this uh, is also a song, and it's called Hate Fuck Yourself. You can hate yourself and you can fuck yourself and of course you can hate fuck yourself. You can rub yourself raw until you taste, till you bleed and of course you can hate fuck yourself. You can cram things down your throat until you gag, until you choke and of course you can hate fuck yourself. You can fuck your ass with dildos made of glass And of course you can hate fuck yourself And of course you can go fuck yourself With loving tenderness But loving tenderness is not always so hot, I guess You can hate yourself and you can fuck yourself and of course you can hate fuck yourself one more time you can hate yourself you can fuck yourself and of course you can hate fuck yourself thank you thank you john that was delightful thank, thank you, you. <laughs> zoe's yelling thank you in the background <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. Um, I had a question, but I lost it, so I'm sorry. It's gone. It's gone for me. I, I lost your audio. Hey, John, we lost your audio. So again, thank you so much, and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Let us check in quickly with the artist. Okay, that is down. So, so how much of your process is pre-visualization? -visual storyboard in a movie? Yeah. Yeah. I welcome the changes. Changes are good. Right, Leon, how about you? Do you do a lot of previs or? Uh, I don't do any. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think about it. I think that's the main thing that I do is kind of give it some thought and try to get a concept together. Um, and I did kind of try to think of some things to do, but of course I didn't do any of that that I kind of pre-did, but I kind of just get the concept and kind of just go with it. So, seems to work for me. <laughs> cool. All right, next up is actually me doing some of my electronic experimental stuff, and it'll take me a minute to get to the room, so bear with me.
This is a test. This station is conducting a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. The broadcasters in your area, in voluntary cooperation with federal, state, and local authorities, have developed this system to keep you informed in the event of an emergency. If this had been an actual emergency, the attention signal you just heard would have been followed by official information, news, and instructions. This concludes this test of the emergency broadcast system. I could have stayed there all night. <laughs> Let me get back to the screen here. That was great. Thank you, Joe. All right, let's check in on, on everyone. Uh, let's go to the screen. Now, when I was looking, do I have the mic set? Yes. I was going through your online art. Um, I notice you have both have distinct palettes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Now, what are you talking about? What am I talking about? <laughs> well, Zoe, you tend to move, move towards reds and orange. Yeah. And Leon, I notice you tend towards blues, greens, and yellows. Yeah, I do like a hot and cold kind of thing. But, but yeah, yeah, I definitely the bright colors. I I, I do a lot of bright colors. <laughs> so what what captures you with the reds and the and the other colors? Man, the I got a lot of rage. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of rage, and I just got to paint it out. 
That's not it. I don't know. I just really like red. <laughs> I like red and yellow a lot, which I don't know why. I just gravitate towards them. All right. Looks like we are ready to move into our next spoken word performance. Next up is Eileen Sullivan. Oh, I'm not on screen. Let me get on screen. Now I'm on screen. Next up is Eileen Sullivan. Our last spoken word performer of the evening is actress and poet Eileen Sullivan. Eileen is a staple of the Trenton Arts community, a regular volunteer at Artworks Trenton, our stage mom at, re, at our remote analog Trenton sessions who cooked for us and kept us well fed, and also a very dear, dear friend to us all. So let's bring up Eileen. Eileen, can you turn your video on? Oh, there we go. Let me get you front and center. Okay, we see you. Eileen. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, great. You are live. Are you ready? Hey, hey, everybody. Hey. Hey, hey, hey you guys. I've been enjoying this so much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank Artworks for letting me participate in this event. I appreciate it. And everybody out there, support the arts in our community. Okay, I'm going to read a couple of poems. Here we go. Can the snow make me clean? Wash away the dirt and sin, wring out my soul like a dirty sponge. No light, no light. My hand reaches up, up through the earth, layers and layers, moist and soft, dark and dense, like layers in a cake, reaching upward to escape. Would that be good enough? If I could be weightless now and feel your kiss? Feel your hands brush over my skin. Does daylight beckon? Can we begin? My eyes, my eyes, I'm blinded and I cannot see. The skies, the skies are optimized, epitomized, I'm compromised. My ears, my ears, I cannot hear. Mumblings, rumblings, it's all unclear. I'm lost, I'm found, I'm spun around. The directions are muddled, I'm befuddled. Even in the light of day, it seems as though I've lost my way. I open up, I don't know what's inside. The flight plan is hazy, I'm flying blind, imploding, exploding into the sun. I am done. I am one. East side, west side, all along the town. But when it's on the north side, you say it's going down. So whether it's east coast or whether it's west, we all have a hood. We all can attest. You love it. You leave it. You say it's a mess. You want to change it? Want to save it? Huh. Bitches are roaming. Kids in the street are rapping a beat. Shorty got a 40. Keep your head in the game around every corner. Look behind, check your back. It's always the same. So can you love it? Can you leave it? Or can you be the change? You feel the hate, you can relate, want to capitulate. When moon is high and sunlight beckons, remember, eight minutes, 46 seconds. Feel the void, remembering George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Elijah McCain. It's me, it's you, it's us, it's them. The list goes on ad infinitum. It's a battle cry, it's do or die. It's me, it's you, it's us, 
It's them. Remember, eight minutes, 46 seconds. So that's what I have for you this evening. Um, again, everybody keep safe, wear a mask. Yeah. And remember, always choose love. Thank you, Eileen. That was wonderful. My pleasure. Okay. Have a, a great evening. Thank you. A little confused. I have too many buttons I'm running this all myself. Thank you so much. Love you. Love you too. We'll talk to you soon. So, Leanne, you, are we done? I think I'm done. Cool. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Let me, put, let me put that on the, the full screen for a second. <laughs> Lee on camera. Nice. Yeah. That is delightful. I can't believe it's, it's, that was so quick. <laughs> it's like the door was transformed in an hour and 36 minutes. There you yeah. go. <laughs> you, did, you did that so quick, Leon. Yeah, not bad. Now do the back. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up in about four minutes, we have Hole in the Ground coming. Oh, nice. Who's Hole in the Ground? <laughs> well, the, the intro will be in four minutes. You All just right, have, to right. wait. You have to wait. You have to wait. Let me see if we have. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'm like. I'm, gl I'm glad you got it piped in, though, so at least we get to hear. Yeah, that would have would have been sterile otherwise. Yeah, it would be like. I like that dude's poetry. That shit was funny. It oh was my good gosh, too. that was so good. It was so good though too. It was funny, but it wasn't just funny. You know, it was like it was good too. Well, we have a few minutes, Leon. Do you want to tell us about the, the imagery in this? Uh, I could. On camera? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. That way, that way a little bit. Okay, I was, I was, right. I was wondering. There you are. Uh, yep, there you are. Okay. I'm All right. right, that's perfect. All right. So, it basically, you know, since it was the... Um, <clears throat> The Doors of Hope, right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just did like the word hope, but then I kind of threw my little uh, eyeball guy in here. So it's like a little fun guy that I do. So it's kind of like, so he's like hanging off the, the H and then spraying into the P's. Did like the pattern background and stuff just to create movement and color. And then I kind of like tried to connect all the letters together, like the P goes into the E and you know, the H is, is hooked in with the character. So just really try to balance everything out and fit everything on the door. I know a lot of people's like, oh, these doors are big, but you know, the scale that we usually paint as graffiti arts is two to three times this size. And it's usually uh, a lot more horizontal or I'm used to painting a lot more horizontal. So it was a fun challenge to kind of make a real vertical piece. Cool. I like the way you work the door hole, the uh, doorknob hole. Uh, right. It, it kind of just worked out like that. So it was kind of perfect. <laughs> now, does the eye character have a representation to you? or is it? I, I mean, you know, eyes are um, It's kind of like a fun little guy, you know, kind of like creating mischief. But, you know, the eyes are like the windows to the soul. There's a lot of different meaning. I kind of feel like... Uh, you know, but to me, it's kind of just like a, a little guy that's kind of like creeping around and checking things out, causing a little bit of chaos here and there. Uh, but yeah, that's just a little fun thing to do. Cool. I love it. And it works really good as a O. 
because it's yeah circular. <laughs> Cool, thank you. Awesome. We're having a, a, a minor delay in getting our next artist into Zoom. Oh, okay. Ah, all right, he is there. Let's bring that down and proceed. Oh, that's the wrong screen. This screen. All right, during Nikki Nailbaum's citywide musical festival, Asfino Fest, which I can never pronounce, Nikki actually made an effort to put bands and acts back to back that she thought would relate to each other and get along, which I've never heard of a festival booked that way. But that's how I met uh, our next act, Hole in the Earth, Miguel. And Miguel pairs analog percussion with electronic synthesis, triggers, uh, triggers MIDI, and visuals to create something truly unique. Now let's see if we can bring up... Miguel onto the Zoom. Miguel, can you start your, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you bring up your video? Sure, so I was just wondering, um, since the I have audio, I do not see video for you. Coming back in. Hold on. Arthur, you plan on using some of these concentration camps to hold them because they keep re-entering. I already have a concentration camp. Andy, you gonna cover me on this too? <laughs> it's called Tent City. All right, Miguel, you are live. You said the Tent City is a concentration camp. Okay, I said it one time coming out of an Italian American club, but you know what? I'm not gonna back down. So what? Maybe it is a concentration camp. I don't want to make it look nice like the Hilton Hotel. I think I'm not getting, not getting out of your, out of your own.
Share, share. All right, Miguel, we're having some audio issues. We're not getting your audio. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but uh, I don't know it's not working. <laughs> Fuck. And it sounded, and it sounded so, so good when so we tested it last night. Last night. All right, why don't you, right, why don't you I'll, I'll give you I'll, a few I'll, minutes to, the, like five minutes to debug, we'll, we'll, I'll play something else, play something else. and um, I'll and check um, with you I'll in five minutes. In five minutes. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, quick change of plans, and let's see what we can throw up. How about, oh, I don't think that'll work. I can do that. All right, let me set these screens up. Our apologies, everyone. Uh, we're gonna go back to this screen and get rid of this screen. Let's move that since Leon's done. Popularity, what is it made of? How does a person get to be popular with lots of people? What makes people like one person and not another? Yes, indeed. Both Don and Sue look like the kind of people you'd like to know, don't they? How do I 
look depends on good grooming habits, health, posture, cleanliness, and neatness. factor is decision, the freedom to, of choice, the freedom to come up with a decision. It should be, I would like to become this way or another in spite of conditions. Okay, Miguel, do we have you back?
All right, we'll give you, right, we'll give you right, we'll a couple more minutes, because then we were closing the show soon. Hit me up on um, Facebook Messenger if you get it. All right, Mike's alive again. Why right, we wait for, give Miguel a couple more minutes. Um, we are nearly at the nine o'clock hour. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank Artworks, not only for this event, but for all the things that I've been involved with, with Artworks. And I've worked with many arts organizations over the years, but none are better than Artworks Trenton. Uh, they do gallery shows, art all night, art all day, seminars, classes, and so much more. But most importantly, they are inclusive and open to everyone every genre, every style, and have said yes to every crazy idea I've come up with. And that's so wonderful. So do please support the arts, support Sprout U, support Artworks uh, Trenton. Because um, right now we need it more than ever. Art is one way to change the world, and the world needs change. And remember, $35 gets you the standard edition, Analog Trenton and the, and the double CD, and 50 gets you the limited edition deluxe Gatefold color vinyl, which is wonderful. We only printed 500 of those, and they are numbered, hand numbered. Um, thank you to our artist Zoe Perone and Leon Rainbow. Couldn't have done it without you. Well, obviously couldn't have done it without you. It was about you. <laughs> um, Danielle and the Sprouts of Sprout You. Dan Castle, John S. Hall, Eileen Sullivan. Um, and, and Miguel of Hole in the Earth, and uh, a special thank you to Jesse and Lauren and the entire Artworks family. We'll stick with Zoe for a few minutes and see if we can get Miguel on. Let me get some background sound going.
Miguel, are you working? Miguel, are you working? Miguel, are you working? like two more minutes so they sure, got to figure it sure. out all right all right Okay, Miguel, you ready? It's called Ten City. You said the Ten City Take it away, Miguel. Miguel. concentration camp. Okay, I said it one time coming out at an Italian American club, but you know what? I'm not going to back down. So what? Maybe it is a concentration camp. I don't want to make it look nice like the Hilton Hotel.
Yeah. I do paint there all the time. Oh, my mic is on. And that concludes, back on camera though. And that concludes our night. Thank you so much um, for attending our first live painting session from the House of Robot in co-production with Artworks Trenton. Thank you so much, Zoe Perone. Thank you so much, Leon Rainbow. And thank you so much everyone for watching who donated. If you did donate to the premiums, please email me, bill at houseofrobot.com with your donation receipt and mailing address and you will get those out first thing on Monday. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.